What's up guys? How are my toes doing out there? This is Jonathan aka The Toe Bro and I am back for another video. It's been a long time since my last video so I really apologize for that guys. It's been a pretty busy month. I was doing a little bit of traveling, some for business, some for pleasure. But I'm back and I'm here to give you guys uh, something new, something exciting, uh, another surgical procedure. Before we get started with the surgical procedure, I just want to say thank you for all the support, all the love, all the likes, all the comments, all the dislikes, all the criticism. I'll take it all. I'll take everything I can get from you guys. I tried my best this week to respond to as many comments as I could and give you guys as much info. The, the support and, and the interaction has been amazing. I can't believe how much these videos are growing and it really motivates me. Uh, this month to put a lot more content out so i'm trying to working on, i'm trying to work on scheduling more content on a more regular basis i have like 40 or 50 videos i filmed over the last month two months of all these different procedures surgical procedures uh, routine care thick nails corns calluses whatever i've been doing in my office i've been trying to film it so it's now just a matter of me sitting down editing them uh, and making them really presentable and informative and fun for you guys so based on the feedback from you guys, uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different with this video. I'm just going to go right into it, no music, talk everything out, explain what's going on, keep it simple, let you guys be able to hear me clearly, and then we'll see how you guys like this one, and from that we'll decide what the next video is going to be like. We have a really exciting, interesting case today, so let's go into a little bit of a background information on the patient. So we have a a young mother of three, she's early 40s, all her, her, uh, all her children have seen me. Uh, she had great results with her children with the issues that they had, some uh, foot pain, some, some plantar warts, everything's gone. So she's suddenly starting to complain of some pain herself in her right fifth baby toe. So in the first appointment, we take the look at her, at her foot and we could see this yellow hard a circular lesion on the inside of her right baby toe. So from first glance, it looks pretty much to be like a corn. And a corn is usually hard skin with a little central core portion that's caused because of too much pressure from the baby toe touching the other toe. And this is usually caused because of tight or narrow footwear. So our patient today, she's loves wearing high heels, loves wearing pointy shoes. So from the background information and just from first glance, it really does look to be a corn. To be a corn. So how we normally treat corns is we remove as much of the dead skin. We try to enucleate or core or take out the core from this yellow hardened portion. And that's what's going to give the patient relief. So during that first treatment, as I was removing the core, I found that it was extremely soft and it wasn't a perfect circle and it was very fleshy and normally a corn is pretty firm and just hard dead skin so even though it's between the toes and there's a lot of moisture when I'm usually taking out a corn it is a hard core of dead skin so when I noticed that it was a little bit fleshy and soft not like a typical corn a few flags went off in my head and I said you know uh, how long have you had this and it was just a recent time she said you know just a month or so and she's been wearing high heels for a long time so again something that just popped up I asked her if there was any new shoes any new activity nothing changed I'm very honest with my patients so and I'm very open and I, I speak out loud to them so I told her right away I have a feeling this may not be just a normal corn and she asked you know what could it be I said you know what I have a feeling it could possibly be a wart and she says you know my kids had warts I've seen warts before don't they have tons of little black dots don't they look a little bit different and I said they do but because of the location you know the, the fact that it just popped up the way that the fleshiness of the of the lesion that I just took out I said it doesn't seem like a normal corn so this is the game plan. We're gonna try to treat it like a corn. We're gonna try to avoid tight pointy shoes. We're gonna add a spacer in between and we're gonna see how it grows back or how it feels with time. If it comes back very quickly with a lot of pain um, and if it still has this fleshy look to it, uh, even though you're wearing better footwear, 
I feel that it may be a wart and we might have to surgically remove it. So sure enough, after a week or so, I get another call. The office gets a call from her saying, you know, the pain's back, the lesion has fully filled up. So even though we removed a quite a bit amount of that dead skin, she says that it filled up, it's flat again, and it's very, very painful. Even when I do normal corns, when when we remove the corn, there should be relief for at least a few weeks, more than more than just one week. So I told her, you know what, I think that's a sign that we might have to do a surgery to surgically remove this lesion and possibly get rid of this wart that might be here, okay, because it's not normal for a corn to react like that. We booked an appointment where she knew ahead of time that we we're going to do the procedure. So what would happen with any sort of excision for this kind of lesion, the toe would be numb. Uh, she doesn't feel anything from the procedure. She's able to drive home and she's just ready for a little bit of discomfort, possibly for the first couple days and for the toe to be a little bit sore for the first week. So we booked an appointment knowing what was about to happen. And let's continue with the video, seeing how the whole procedure works from start to finish. So here we are, guys. We're in the office about to do the procedure. So the first thing we got to do is freeze this baby toe. So a little background information on, on how to freeze a toe. So actually each toe has four nerves, two on the top, two on the bottom. So what we're going to be doing is injecting from the top of the toe uh, to freeze the top nerve. And what happens after we freeze the top nerve, I push the needle a little bit deeper to reach the bottom nerve on that same side. So to completely numb a toe, we have to do two injections on either side of the toe we drop freezing on the top portion and on the bottom portion on that one side. And this will completely numb the toe and there'll be no pain or any sensation during any sort of procedure. So what I'm using is a mixture of uh, anesthetic, a short acting anesthetic that, that kicks in very fast with a mixture of a long acting anesthetic. So this is something that will allow the toe to stay numb for up to 10 to 12 hours. So the reason I use this kind of mixture is to allow the patient to have very little to no discomfort after the procedure. So as you can see, it's very quick, very simple, toes numb. After the injection is complete and I've tested the, the toe to make sure it's completely numb, uh, I will prep all my instruments, uh, get everything ready, and off we go. So what I'm putting on right now is a tourniquet. And this tourniquet is very important anytime I do any sort of surgical excision or removal of a potential growth. The reason for that, we want to minimize the amount of blood loss during the procedure. And I also want to have a very clear vision of the field that I'm working in. Anytime it's a uh, lesion is bleeding too much, it's very hard to see uh, the area that you're working on to make sure that you've removed any sort of bad or un unwanted growth. So by having this little bit of a tourniquet on the toe, it's going to accomplish all those things. Little to no blood loss, and I can see the area I'm working in very clearly. The tourniquet is on, it's secure. I'm just wiping down the toe with an antibacterial disinfectant. Now it's time for the fun part. So what that is, is starting to prepare the area for the removal of this mass. So the way I do that is by using a scalpel blade and I lightly score uh, an area around the lesion. And I leave around two to three millimeters of healthy skin uh, just outside that bad circle to make sure we get everything out. So what I'm doing right now is lightly scoring the skin just to create a little bit of an incision where I can use a curette to pull out this lesion. I'm not going deep. The problem is if you go too deep, you might cut into deeper tissue and create more of a scar or a wound than we really need to. If this is a wart, which I really do think it is, we just have to pull off the wart from the bottom layer of the skin. So right now I'm taking out the curette, I'm putting it in the little groove that I made, I'm starting to pull the wart 
off of what we call the basement membrane. The moment I started to lift the lesion, I was 100% confident that it was truly a wart. And the reason for that, a wart, when we excise it or cut it out, it's an encapsulated mass. So as you can see, it's basically a lump of very hard, firm skin. It comes usually off in one piece with good technique. I literally just have to scrape or pull the wart off the basement membrane and it should come off in one piece. The reason that there's a little bit of blood, uh, that's because a wart is full of vascular tissue. A wart is a virus and uses the body's blood supply to grow and multiply. So it's normal even with the tourniquet to have a little bit of bleeding, but as you can see, there's no steady blood flow. Uh, once I get that mass out, there's very little to no blood. So what I'm doing now is I'm cleaning the area, removing as much uh, of that warty tissue that was attached to this area uh, from the healthy skin. And you can see how important it is to have a good tourniquet. This is what's going to allow me to see that all that stuff behind is normal tissue. The basement membrane is a nice uh, thin layer of white tissue. It's very, very smooth. And so I can see that I'm on the basement membrane. I'm pulling off all the dead warty tissue that's around the area, making sure that there's nothing left behind. We want to stay above this layer of skin. Underneath this layer, that's where all the fat cells are. That's where the muscle and deeper structures can be found. Once we go past that level, that's where we can definitely increase our chance of having a scar or further damage to, to structures that don't need to be uh, affected. So at this point, I've continued to clean out the area. I feel pretty confident that there's nothing left behind. Uh, it's looking much healthier. There's no blood. So once I'm confident that everything is out, there's no more potential warty tissue, I'm going to apply two things to make sure that this wart tissue doesn't grow back. Number one is electrocautery, and I'm using a disposable uh, electrocautery tool that will, uh, at a controlled temperature, burn or damage that tissue, uh, ensuring that any wart tissue left behind is killed. And after that, I'm going to be applying a chemical called phenol. And this is the same chemical I use uh, during my nail surgery to prevent any nail from growing back. And the reason I use these two steps is really to try to eliminate the chance of a regrowth. Even when performing a surgery like this, it's it's possible for the wart to grow back. So the, the more aggressive I am now uh, with removing as much tissue as I can and then applying electricity and an acid will help increase our chance of the wart never coming back. The wart has been removed. I don't see any warty tissue left behind. I used the electrocautery. I used the chemical cautery to try to kill any remaining wart tissue. So all that's left now is just to dress the wound. 
So again, I'm using uh, betadine, or I call it iodine, which is an antibacterial uh, ointment that will help try to prevent any sort of infection and keep the area relatively dry uh, during the healing process. So I'm going to apply a gauze and a self-adhesive wrap to, to cover this toe. So this patient's going to be numb for the next 10 to 12 hours. When the freezing wears off, she might feel a little bit of discomfort, throbbing sensation in the toe, but as long as she wears open toe shoes, there should be little discomfort. The hardest time would be the first 24 hours. That's where she usually, uh, patients usually feel the most comfort, and then it really just goes down after that. It just really depends on the, matter, uh, the, the type of shoe she's wearing and how much pressure she's putting on this toe. She's going to be using an ointment that I prescribe for her uh, twice a day, every day, until she comes back to see me for one week. After that, we should start to see a scab to form, and she'll be coming back to the office usually three to four weeks after that. And by then, we should see pretty much a healed area with a scab, and that's really going to give us the first look to, to see if there's any warty tissue left behind. Sometimes, if there is, we do a second round of treatment, but I usually don't do another surgical procedure. It'd be something like an, uh, an acid, a topical treatment, or laser treatment that I offer in my clinic. So there you guys have it, another procedure done, uh, something a little bit interesting, at least to me that is. Uh, it looks, from first glance, it looks like a corn, a very common place for a corn, but ended up being something very different. Uh, not a very common place to find a wart, but it was, we were able to handle it effectively, efficiently, warts gone, patients feeling great, and hope you guys enjoyed seeing something a little bit different, hope the video is a little bit more enjoyable, uh, wasn't distracting without any music. Very, very simple. So I have the next video planned and I'm thinking of doing uh, a nail cutting of extremely thick and long nails. I just recorded it two days ago and I'm going to probably leave the voice, the banter in between me and the patient because people always love to hear that natural environment. So that one I'll put out pretty quick because it's not going to take too much editing. So again, thank you guys for all the love, all the support. Give me the feedback. I'll be watching. I'll be listening. I'll be responding. You guys are great. Tobro out. <laughs>